Check this ship out. It might not look amazing, but when you realize what it does, you'll be extremely surprised. Ah, she's built like a steakhouse, but she handles like a bistro. In Starfield, weight is an issue. Be it your carry weight or mass on the ship you're building. You might have seen my previous two videos running through the perfect C-class ship and perfect ship with no requirements. But now, after more hours than I can count, I can say with full confidence that the only real thing you need your ship to do is have the maximum amount of cargo space to weight ratio. You may have seen monstrosities that look ugly as sin floating around the internet, basically Borg cubes that fit a lot of cargo. The problem is adding cargo components also adds a ridiculous amount of mass. Adding mass reduces your maneuverability and your jump range. Without 30 jump range, the max, you can't access every system. So if you build a ship with the most amount of cargo space, you'll not be taking that ship to many systems at all. <laughs> She's out of control. You need to find a balance between weight and power. Enter the Bistro. Through a lot of trial and error, I found the maximum ratio while making the ship look great and not at all like a flying construction site. Add one more small component to this and you lose a light year in travel distance. You win again, gravity! This ship is able to travel to any system from almost anywhere on the map, making your cargo runs easy. It's perfect for mining asteroids and storing the contents without having to unload every couple of minutes. It's extremely tanky with heavy shields and hull, letting you tank everything since, you guessed it, it's got bad maneuverability. But that is, as many of you know, completely pointless when you have auto turrets ripping through enemies, requiring you to avoid dogfights. Ships really just get you from set piece to set piece and how they handle all their speed is irrelevant. It's basically just a cosmetic stat when the ship you fly can take down anything in seconds. The firepower on this ship is crazy and you'll have enough power to power up everything at once. You can swap in the habs you want and it comes standard with all the crafting tables. It has the auto turrets, but it also has perfect manual firing weapons for mining asteroids and shooting down enemies. The best parts are unlocked at level 60, but you can build this ship's design right away and swap in upgrades as you get them. Now, the design itself doesn't matter. What matters are the parts used to make it. So if you don't like the bridge design, you can build it more like this with a cockpit at the front. You can move things around as you see fit, but keep the ratio of cargo components and you should be fine. You may also not like ladders at all on your ship, and if so, it's possible to build the front-facing cockpit design without any ladders. Follow my other two shipbuilding videos for that information, but this video will be ignoring the zero ladder requirement for the sake of external visual fidelity and making it look more compact. I don't mind a ladder I can jump pack up yes. since I barely use the habs as it is, but since we're talking about the internal, let's have a quick tour followed by a how to build tutorial. And here we have the bistro. You'll immediately notice that you can enter the ship from the front, which saves you having to run all the way around the back with some designs. You also have the front facing docker, which is definitely helpful as it enters right next to the cockpit. So speaking of cockpit, let's go there now. And we can see the ship is quite visually pleasing. Let's get up and have a look around the main cockpit, the bridge. Since this ship is relatively small, your crew will mostly hang out with you here. But if you drop down, you have the pharmaceutical lab and you have the rest of the infirmary. Also, you have the research station as well. Also, if you drop down once more, you have all of the work benches. Then you can exit the ship if you're docked with a space station or another ship through here, or you can exit through here. Sorry. Very simple ship, very small because it has so much cargo it needs to carry, as you can see. All of these hidden cargo bays. Get from one spot, otherwise you just need to fly around the galaxy. I've got a video in the description below showing you where all of the best places to find ship parts are. Otherwise, use your ship builder at your main base, but start off by building the shell of what you want, and then you can fly to different locations and put on those individual parts and swap out others that you've used temporarily. So starting here, you see you have more than enough power to power every single system. You'll also notice that it has a crew of six, but you can definitely add to that by putting in different habs. It has a 40 reactor. It has that max 30 light year jump range. It has a high amount of shields, but you can increase that if you'd like a lower shield regen rate. It has a lot of particle weapon damage 
and it has a ton of cargo space. Now this is impacted by my payload skill, so it might be slightly different for you based on that skill in the tech tree. It also has a 1500 hull and it has 500 fuel, which is more than enough to basically get everywhere on a single jump. Now with all these parts together, it should cost you minimum about half a mil, but you might get away with less if you swap out other parts. So how do we build this beast? Now it's quite complicated, so I'm gonna to need to pull it apart kind of one by one to show you how it all works. First, let's start with the wing segments. So let me just take all of these off first. So these are the wings. You have a Nova Cowling 2L stacked on top of another Nova Cowling 2L and they're held together by two of these cargo holds. Now there are different models as you can see here. The one below it is the 30 ton hauler cargo hold and the one above that is the Galleon S203 cargo hold. This one has slightly more mass than this one but has a slightly higher cargo amount. Now remember I said there's a fine balance between the cargo amounts and mass so there is a reason for those different amounts there. Then we have the engine attached to that, the Slayton Aerospace Sal 6830 engine. Now this has a lot of maneuvering thrust and engine thrust, but you can really swap in and out what you want there. You don't need to follow this guide in terms of exact engines. You can use some of the other more powerful uh, C-class engines if you want, or if you're not quite there yet, you can use a lower A-class engine as well. But that is the first wing. Let's take apart the other wing as well. Now you'll notice a slight difference on this wing to this wing. This wing has the shield generator attached to the left side and the shield generator is the Odin 3050C shield generator. And this is a C class. It has quite a bit of max health, but it's not the highest max health shield you can get. The reason I went with this one is slightly less mass and it has a faster regen rate, but you do require the Starship designed rank four for this. So you can, like other parts, swap them in and out based on what you need, as long as you keep the mass around the same. That is the main thing you need to look out for. It also has two turrets. The first one is the Obliterator 250 MEV Alpha turret. This one automatically acquires targets and fires upon them in an arc, but this being on the wing basically hits anything around you. So this is the best spot for it. And then we have the Obliterator 250 MEV Auto Alpha Beam. This one is the one you manually fire and it does less damage obviously than the turret, but it fires at a faster fire rate and it fires straight ahead. Good for shooting down asteroids or starting fights with people you want the turrets to start acquiring. And it's the same over on this side, except instead of having the shield on the left hand side, we have a rear facing turret. So this will just get people from an arc behind you if you need to get people off your, your backside. So this is more than enough for you. So those are the two wings. It might be a good idea to build those after, but this is the main body itself. Now, if we have a look on the underside, we have quite a few landing gears. So let's grab all of those first. So I've grabbed everything from the bottom so I can pull it apart and show you. And here is the underside of the ship. So this is where you want to start. You want to start with your grav drive, the Apollo G V300. This gives you a grav jump thrust of 50, which is the most important thing here. The highest amount of thrust is needed because we want to get that 30 jump range the 30 light year jump range. So the highest amount of thrust possible is what we need. Then we have the highest power generated possible reactor, but the grab drive is more important in this particular case. But having 40 power generated means we can power everything. You'll need to be, I believe, level 60 to get access to this. It's got piloting for and uh, Starship design for as well. So you'll need to work yourself up to this one. Then we have the 120 LD landing bay. This one connects, as you can see with the arrow, to whatever is on top of it. So that's very important. If you want to swap out another landing gear for design purposes, it needs to be connected to the top here. And then we have six of these NG20 landing gear wides. 
they fit on the side. And then we have the pinpoint 4G landing gear for the ports. The two here, make sure you use the Z button and swap them around to the right side before connecting them. You'll notice that these landing gears here have a lander thrust of four and these ones have a lander thrust of two. That's important because these this amount of thrust total that I've put together here is just enough to lift the weight. So you can swap out one of these landing gears, but you need to add another one with thrust of four. Then we have a Galleon S204 cargo hold. This cargo is 1480 space. So this is hidden underneath the uh, fuel tanks, but this is a, uh, the highest amount of cargo storage that we have access to and it's hidden kind of underneath the ship so you don't see how ugly it is. Whereas these cargo holds here look more like the structure of the ship. So these particular components I like to hide away. So this is the underside of the ship. This is everything you need to know about the underside. So the next thing we need to do is to build upwards. So let's start with what's at the bottom here. So we have the nose cap and the cargo holds. So let's grab those. So first is another Galleon S203 cargo hold. The one, uh, the 1200 cargo capacity variant. And then we have another one, but this one is flipped onto the upside here. We have another one over here and another one over here. Like so. And you can see the ship starting to come together. We'll grab this nose cap C, the port four, and we'll pop it here. And another one. And then we have the next layer of the ship. So we will grab the Hope Docker and the Tayo Workshop 2x1 hab. Now you can put any hab you want here. If you don't want the workshop hab, if you want, you know, a captain's quarters, you can put that here instead, but this is really up to you. What's important here is to fill out this section and attach the Hope 11 docker at the front here. This is just so you can dock to other ships and you won't actually be able to fly the ship or to, to flight check it without having some form of a docker. So it's good to have it here just at the front just because at the top won't be possible because of the bridge and over to the side won't be possible because of the wings. So that's just the best spot for it. So now that we've got that done, we can start putting the other components in. The first one is the M50 Ulysses Helium-3 tank. These tanks together provide 500 grab jump fuel. You will need the Starship Design Rank 4 for these, but you can put in any other tanks in this spot here. There's enough space to put fuel tanks for, for any design really. And then we want the next section of the ship. We've got a, a range of six of these uh, 30 ton haulers that provide 1000 cargo. We just pop them onto the top. Like so. And then we want to, well, we could essentially just pop the infirmary and the bridge onto it and it would be done but we want to make it look a little bit more visually pleasing so we put the shroud cap a here and another one over here and then we've capped off the design so grab a tayo cowling for top and put it here put a tayo companion way one by one here now it can be any one by one like mentioned before and it can be any hab two by one, like mentioned before, but I'm using the top versions of the Tayo uh, companionway and the infirmary, the infirmary for the research station and the chem lab. And I like the top parts of the Tayo design just because they look a little bit more rounded off. And then you wanna grab the Contiki Shroud Eklund Bridge. Now this one needs a Starship Design Rank 4 and you will need to go to the Shroud Eklund manufacturer in order to get access to this but you can use any other bridge you want really, or you can put a cockpit here instead. Then the body of the ship is mostly built, so double click on the wing and attach it. And do the same for the other and attach it. And there we have it. 
The Bistro is ready to fly.